Hey, Jason here from Theme Punch. So this is part three of our Essential Grid Basics series, and in this video we'll explore the grid's main media source. So far we've been pulling in featured images for our grid, but right here I've got a grid set up with YouTube videos. So let's go ahead and see how I set that up. So over in our Essential Grid Overview, we have our My Grid, and in the Settings section, right now I've got this grid set up to be pulling in posts with Category A, B, Tag 1, and Tag 2. And those are basically all of the posts listed here. So if you remember before, inside the post we set up a featured image right here in this area. And that's what we were using to pull into the grid. But to pull in YouTube video, right down here in the Essential Grid Custom Settings, in the Alternative Sources tab, we can enter a YouTube ID and pull that in instead. So I've gone ahead and done that for all of our six posts. And then in the Essential Grid Settings, under the Source tab, Instead of Featured Image, for the media source, I've chosen YouTube Video. And a quick overview of this media source section is that you can not only select multiple selections, but you can also prioritize those selections. So a post can have not only a featured image, but it can also have multiple alternative sources. So for example, we could have a YouTube ID, a Vimeo ID, a SoundCloud track ID, and depending on what sources each post had, if we had multiple selections here, and then we prioritize them, when the grid loads these posts into the grid, because Vimeo video is selected and at the top of our list, it will first look to see if that post has a Vimeo video assigned, right here. If it doesn't find a Vimeo video ID, it'll then look to see if a YouTube video ID is assigned, and that would be right here. And then lastly, as a fallback, if the post does not have a Vimeo video or a YouTube video ID assigned, then we could just tell it to use the featured image. So I've gone ahead and added multiple alternative sources to each post. Now let's just take a look at what a Vimeo video ID grid would look like. So here's our YouTube grid. And here's what our Vimeo grid would look like. So you can see that there's some black space on the top and bottom of the Vimeo poster images. And the same was for our YouTube grid. And this is because since we're using an even grid, we have a fixed items ratio. And right now it's set to four by three. But for YouTube and Vimeo now, a better ratio is really 16 by nine. So let's go ahead and change that to 16 by nine and then refresh the grid and see how it looks. So by changing the items ratio, we got rid of the extra black space above and below the video's poster. And let's go ahead and check that for YouTube as well. If we head back to Source, and select YouTube, and prioritize that, save the grid, and it looks much better for our YouTube videos as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and check out uh, SoundCloud. And we can have a SoundCloud grid because in each of the posts I have added a SoundCloud track ID. And here's what our SoundCloud grid looks like. 
And I think SoundCloud is probably best at 4x3. So let's change this back from 16x9 to 4x3. And that looks like a better ratio for SoundCloud. So you might be wondering, well, I saw over in the YouTube ID and Vimeo ID and SoundCloud track ID parts, there's a video and a frame ratio. Now, why did the ratio take effect here in the items ratio and not here where it's set next to the ID? Well, the reason is that whenever you use an even grid, the grid item ratio will always be set from right here. Now, if you remember in our previous video tutorial, where we talked about a masonry grid, normally the ratio of a masonry grid item is determined by the image's original size. But because we aren't using a featured image and we have a grid of SoundCloud, YouTube, and Vimeo, that's where these ratios here would come into effect. So the options for video and SoundCloud are 4 by 3 or 16 by 9. So here we can set, uh, let's see, SoundCloud to 4 by 3. Let's set YouTube to 16 by 9. And go ahead and update that post. And then if we save our grid to have a masonry grid layout, And let's go ahead and change the source back to YouTube. Okay, so you can see that our YouTube videos here all have a 4 by 3 ratio. But for this post, which has our Karate Kid video, this has a 16 by 9 ratio. So in order to make all of these even, if we're using a masonry grid, we would want to set all of the ratios for our YouTube IDs to 16 by 9. So to recap, the ratios here inside the Essential Grid custom settings are only applicable for when you're using a masonry grid layout. When you're using an even grid layout, it doesn't matter whatever is assigned here because the items ratio inside the layout section here will always be used as the default. So you may also be asking, well, I noticed that you hovered over the videos and I'm not seeing any hover effect. This is true for when you load videos or SoundCloud or any other alternative media source other than an image. But if you wanted to show additional information for each grid item, we could go ahead and, in the skins, select one of the masonry skins. And let's see, let's go ahead and select Cleveland. And then in the grid settings, set our grid layout to masonry. And save our grid. Now we can see some additional information in addition to the videos. So let's just go ahead and explore some additional alternative source content. So back inside the grid I'm going to change this to even and inside the source tab I'm going to select first content image and then move that to the top of the list. So for any of the first content options, basically that's going to be content from the content area of the post itself. So you can see here for our people post, I have some text, and then I have an image, and here I have a YouTube video. So because we selected first content image and moved it to the top of our list, any posts that have an image inside the post will get pulled into the grid. So let's go ahead and save that and then see how it looks on the front end. 
and here you can see now we have our first content images for all of our grid items. And I also have a YouTube video inside the content for all of these posts. So let's see what that would look like. First content YouTube video. Move it to the top. Reload the page. And here we've got all of our videos. And if we were to just view this post here, the first content image and the first content YouTube video are right here in the post itself. So there are really two options for pulling in alternative media sources other than a featured image. And the first option is to assign the alternative source here in the Essential Grid custom settings. And the second option is to just pull in the content from the post's content area. So it's really a matter of convenience. Whatever is best for your site can determine how you decide to assign and pull in content. And another cool thing is if you don't want to edit the alternative sources from within the post itself here, if you head over to your essential grid and scroll down to the preview, you can click this Edit Post Meta icon here and then click on Alternative Sources. And you'll see that the YouTube ID, Vimeo ID, and SoundCloud ID and other alternative sources can also be edited and added here right from within the grid's admin. So basically this information is the same exact information from this section and vice versa. And you might be wondering, well, what if I'm using a custom grid instead of a grid based on posts? Well, if you were to use a custom grid, basically, when adding items to a custom grid, you have an option to choose YouTube, Vimeo, Image, SoundCloud, Simple Content, right from the start. So, for example, if we were to add a YouTube item, we click that, and then we would enter the YouTube ID right here. And then if we were using a masonry grid, we could select the video ratio right here. And then just add element. And we basically don't have to worry about alternative sources because uh, these content items are added right from this section here. And if you scroll down and you hover over this item here, you can also choose one of these options, which is basically the same thing as adding them from here. Okay, so that's a quick overview of the grid's media sources. Now you may be wondering, well I saw this media grid taft here, and you hover over your mouse, and you get this nice hover effect, and then click the play button, and the video plays inside the grid item. We have another video tutorial for that, and I'll go ahead and post the link underneath the description here in this video, so you can check that out. Thanks for watching.